Yes. Uh, Justin Brockman Adventure, episode 12, with my uh, homeboy and Canada's greatest heavyweight boxer, Frankie Rails. <laughs> Fucking fact. If someone disagrees with you, they can come fight you, but I believe that you I'd are. I'd like that, yeah. yeah. I welcome that. Who is, uh, who's, who is apparently Canada's best right now? Well, right now, it's uh, Dylan Carmen stopped Simon Keane a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, ago. It's true. Yeah. So that was a big upset, actually. So yeah. Great job. So I'd like that fight. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We're at, at a Montreal, or is he it? Not, he stopped in Montreal. Uh, Dylan Carmen's from Belleville, I think, Ontario. Ah, okay. So Awesome. Um, and other than that, in Canada, is there anyone left to fight right now? Um, Simon Keane, I'd fight him. Yeah. Other than that, not really. I'd, I want to fight internationally. Yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah. You know? For so. sure. So, yeah, you did it. You spent a lot of time. Well, you just get back from Ukraine, right? Was yeah, it Ukraine? I just got back from yeah. Ukraine. I was in camp with uh, Alexander Yusik. He's the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Yeah. Um, he's fighting Tony Bellew on November 10th. Um, and after that, he wants to go to heavyweight and maybe fight face Anthony Joshua. So Oof. it's a... And he's the best technical fighter there is in yeah. boxing, like one of the top guys. Yeah. So how long were you there for? Two weeks. Yeah, it's good times. Great time, man. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Excellent. And uh I I've known you for probably fifteen years or something yes. like that now. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh you spent uh you spent a lot of your career in Germany, right? Yeah, I uh got lucky. I had a I got a boxing contract after I did a camp with Tyson Fury. Um they invited me and I did some sparring and then they said, "Yeah, you're talented. We'll take you." And cool. Yeah. How long did you do stay stay there for? I was there for four years. Yeah, yeah. We're we're in Germany, in Berlin. We're, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, good was, city. Yeah, I was there this year. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah I had a good time. So yeah. I took my uh, took my boy to watch Pearl Jam in Berlin. Oh, really? Yeah, it was yeah. wicked. So That's wicked. crazy. Um, so, yeah, so and nothing on the slate for you right now? Um, nothing yet. I'm trying to. I'm gonna start concentrating on training, get in good shape, and yep. get ready for a big fight. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully early um, next year then. So one common uh, thing that Frankie has with Cook and a lot of other people that we we train with is uh, uh, Gordon McPhail, right? So yes, sir. He's a game changer, right? Eh? Big time game yeah. changer. Yeah, he, he got me in great shape. Yeah, because you can be he- you can be a heavyweight and still not look gross. Yeah, it's a- <laughs> yeah. I like this version of Frankie Rell a lot better than the one Same. I knew a couple years ago <laughs> for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Get in shape, man. It makes your dick look and bigger. The- so. <laughs> A lot bigger. <laughs> when you're big, man. <laughs> Every inch counts, boys. Every inch yeah. counts. So, so do you have uh, do you have any, any <laughs> do you have anything lined up right now? No, no. I'm just getting. Hopefully, I'll have something in January. I think. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy. Enjoy your holidays. Maybe. Actually, I guess if well, you no, find I'll January, have to work through you the fuck. holidays like yeah. train, but yeah, it's yeah. good. I always kind of like to schedule my fights like, uh, like either in the middle of summer or or kind of January because it kept me out of trouble. You know what I mean? If I knew if I had to train all Christmas break, that I wouldn't turn into a piss tank and get fat or yeah. whatever, right? So it's easy, man. It keeps you like, on discipline. Yeah. yeah, it keeps you ready. Like like yeah. we said before the mics came on, like everyone, they have this, uh, everyone says, oh, stay ready, stay ready. Like it's a thing. I'm like, fucking you stay ready. Like yeah, most people tough. can't get off, the, get off the couch on a good day. Like try yeah. being in like world-class condition all the time. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah, because like you're gonna get your ass beat or else, so you kind of have a reason to get off yeah. the couch, right? If yeah, not, you're sure. just like, oh, whatever. Oh yeah, like I, I like food, I like beer, like yeah. you can't be exactly. living like that strict lifestyle all the time. But physically, it's not great for you either. You gotta kind of ride the wave a little bit here and there, otherwise, like you can't peak out properly, right? So yeah, you can't go like, you know, too shitty low, <laughs> but you gotta ride the wave a bit. So, um, yeah. how the how did you get into fuck boxing? Well, I was 15 years old. I was in Germany at the time as a kid, and um, I was kind of big and fat, and I wanted to fuck girls, and thought, <laughs> shit, man, I got to get in shape, and I tried it, and I liked it, and it worked, and I got, I fucked girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's ex- almost identical to my story. <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah, per- wicked. Uh, so how old were you? Sorry, 15? 15, yeah. 15, how old were you? Not- you weren't much older than that when I met you. Huh? I met you when you were in high when school. I, you right? met me when I was seventeen. I yeah, was yeah, yeah. Jeez, you came to our school. And pretty much the same size as you are now. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah <laughs> probably. But yeah, bigger dick though. Yeah, uh, much the, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many amateur fights did you have? Um, forty-five. Holy shit! It's not even that many, man. Like it, in the I know, Ukraine, I know. In the Ukraine, those guys, they all have three hundred plus amateur yeah. fights. It's just coming it's, from a coming from an MMA like background. Yeah. Like if you make it to twenty fights in your lifetime, it's yeah. like a miracle. You know what I mean? I rem- like I lived in California for two years too. After I was, I finished a little stint in the Navy. I moved to California and I went to like a, it's called City Boxing in San Diego. Yeah, it's a big gym. Oh, and yes, of course. 
and uh there was a couple of amateur mma guys and i was like i was like how the fuck do you fight mma amateur and you, you're not getting paid really it's crazy and yeah. it's like you're fighting like a real mma fight it doesn't yeah. make sense that's so you the just whole go pro right that's the whole thing right like, amateur mma is kind of yeah you're just you might as well go pro you might as well right it's promoters just making money yeah right like everyone shows up for work for free basically yeah. and the risks are yeah and seeing massive. like boxing just changed actually because now they fight with no headgears yeah. and amateurs and it's kind of like why would you do that yeah might as well get paid but you yeah. know what i always find with the amateurs whether it's the mma or boxing kickboxing you need to go through a few to make sure it's what you want everyone in their head thinks they want to fight someone yeah. until, until they get up there because you you and myself and guys like cook like wait we're fighters that's just what we're born to do i think a lot of people think that they are and until they're not, they and yeah. they try to and they, they try it they're out really, they're like whoa yeah. that's yeah. like because you know like you're calm in there i've seen you millions of times but when that bell goes there's a split second of like holy shit yeah. this is really happening right yeah, yeah and uh especially when you're fighting a division like yours where like one punch can switch you off like, like so quickly you know yeah. what i mean it's uh yeah, it, it, we live, especially now with the UFC and, and internet and everything else, like everyone thinks they're a fucking fighter. Everybody wants like, to be a fighter anyways, because yeah, it's, it's cool, right? <laughs> yeah, until you realize how much work it takes and yeah, how little you get paid. Discipline and, yeah. yeah, the money, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, there's no fucking money. There's no money, but then you see the guys who got money, and you're like, fuck, I could be that guy, you think, yeah. and then, you know? Yeah, uh, I think you're probably very much like me, though, where, like, I don't need anyone to watch me, like... They could lock the doors and fight and fucking I don't care yeah, who sees it. It's, I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's <laughs> yeah. like I'm not doing it for the money or the fame or whatever. I just like. You that, like the fight. Yeah. The, you got those few minutes. Blood. Yeah. The few yeah. minutes you get to do that is the best. Yeah. It's the best, uh, best pussy in the entire world. Pretty much. Really. I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah. So uh, did you do, how many, did you do most of your amateur while you're in Germany or you no, did quite I had a bit eight, here? I had eight amateur fights only in Germany because like I moved to Canada just when I turned 17 yeah. pretty much. And um, then I had thirty five or thirty seven. What was your What was your AMI career? Um, I went. I think I was thirty five wins, ten losses, kind uh, of thing. Yeah, it wasn't bad. So, I won the Canadian title. I went to Morocco to the World Championships. I got really sick there, and they tried to not let me fight. And I was like, "Fuck, man, I'm you're already here. I'm fighting for a World Championship, man. Yeah. Let me fight." So I fought. I had a parasite and I was ah. shitting and puking, and it was like bad. And I fought anyways. I lost, but. Cares Give it my shot, you, know, you know that's the one of the best things right? yeah exactly one of the best things about this ride is like the you get to go cool cool places you went to morocco yeah like, you How just came back from the ukraine yeah, yeah like to me that's one of the best things like uh near the end of my career i was just booking fights on location because i was <laughs> i wasn't getting paid anyway right yeah. so i'm like sure i'll go here and go there when i just for the plane ticket right yeah. so awesome uh how old were you when you turned pro uh 25 i think yeah so i've been pro for like five years yeah you're only 30 yeah. Fuck man, you age like shit, eh? Yeah, man, it sucks, <laughs> man. Uh, honestly, I said this earlier, but you look like ten times better than you did a couple years ago. When you start popping your head around Gordy's, like, like you, you, you don't have to eat like a heavyweight, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, for, now it's like I can eat like a heavyweight, but I but, work out like a right, heavyweight, yeah, so for like sure. it all trims well, up, you know? Yeah, just just think about how much stronger and faster you are, right? Like now you know, yes. right? The difference in like, yeah. If you don't strength condition now. Oh. You're, you're gonna get crushed. In this day and age, you gotta do strength yeah. and conditioning. No man. one's no one's skimping on anything, yeah. right? The yeah. nutrition and the strength stuff and like whatever, like so important. Yeah, yeah. huge, huge. Um, yeah, sorry. What was you, and what's your pro record? Um, sixteen and two. Jesus. The two losses are against like world class guys. It was uh, Robert Elenius. He was twenty two wins with twenty one knockouts. He and after my fight, he got knocked out in like the second or third round. And I was like, fuck, that could have been me yeah. knocking him out. And then the other fight was against Adrian Granat. He was 14 wins with 14 knockouts, and he got knocked out in the first round after my fight. Jeez. So I feel like I took a little screw out of them. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah loosened loose, loose them, loose them up too yeah. much. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You know what, though? As a, as a heavyweight, uh, you have a lot of life left in you. I mean, like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Uh, not a lot, but you, you know. About a 36, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Like whereas the lighter weight fighters, they tend they to finish a little quicker, yeah. little quicker. I don't know if it's just because you guys can take a bit more of a, uh, a beating or you're not as active or who knows. I what. think it's the mature, like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Isn't MMA the same? Like guys mature a bit, like the heavyweights mature a bit later. Like they become, yeah, you know, you I get would your man strength a bit later. Yeah, and would, like you get your prime that. later. That's what I mean. And 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 I don't have to do all that weight cutting and all that shit. And that probably takes a toll totally. on guys, right? Yeah, yeah. It's one thing you don't have to worry about. Like, uh, 
yeah, the guy's got to make 265 and you're good. Like, there's guys in the UFC that have to cut to make 265. Yeah, Brock Lesnar, yeah, right? This is, shit is insane. Nuts, uh, Derek Lewis this weekend, too, yeah. Yeah. To cut, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's a huge, huge man. What do you walk around at? Um, me, I'm 240-ish, 245. Oh, okay, so Not that bad. Yeah, yeah. And when you're ready, front, front so ready I go? stay around the same weight, pretty yeah. much. Like, me, I'm... I don't know. I'm probably 250 maybe now. Yeah. I'll go down to 240. I'm not really. Jeez, it's weight transfer. You take it from here and put it up yeah, on your shoulders. Yeah, take it there and get double Ds. You know, I work on my titties. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Atta boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? The weight cut thing is probably a really good point. Like That's these, probably what drains guys yeah, out, these, right? Especially now, like, you didn't see it in boxing as much until, like, the last couple of years. Guys really cutting, yeah. right? You, uh MMA guy's been cutting weight big time because a lot of more wrestlers anyway and they already knew how to do it. Yeah. But everyone's cutting a couple weight classes. Like that dude that Cook fought was fucking huge, man. Like Man, there's guys, uh, Paul Williams, he's in a wheelchair now. He had a motorcycle accident. Yeah. Have you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking he's about. He's like one he fought at one forty, I think one forty seven, and he was he's like a guy who's six foot three, man. It's crazy, eh? <laughs> It's like, like unbelievable. Yeah, I ever uh, I know an MMA profesh- professional anyway, everyone's cutting uh, like 20 pounds or something at least right? at least like a weight class pounds. right like yeah. even these 125ers they're coming down from over 140 yeah like that's like a good percentage of your weight it's when you're crazy, that small man. right yeah. so it's yeah. crazy uh boxing i'm not sure how it works they out, just but changed the rules actually they just made it i think you're only allowed to do 10 percent of your and they reweigh you right the next yeah, day or something like that yeah. but at the same time you're still sponging up like mm-hmm. say you're 170 the night, like say you're fighting at 170 and then fuck the 17 pounds so he's allowed to be the next day 185 or 187 yeah but that's you weigh in in the morning yeah, and then yeah, later yeah. on you're gonna be 195 it yeah you still you got know? that all that time right yeah it takes a long time to yeah to get your hydration back you anyway drink right? a lot of water yeah. and shit right yeah um yeah i couldn't believe so start working with cook i couldn't believe like how, like how what dinosaurs they were when it came to cutting weight and stuff like that right so but yeah. he's got in the times yeah eh? totally but boxers are real pr- proud and like old school yeah, yeah very old school yeah uh, the uh, even with the, with the way they train, the way they they're this co- whole strength coaching. and conditioning stuff's all like it's all new to me too. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure, right. And when the, I was in Germany, all the stuff was so old school. They were like, yeah. I, I, like I was in East Berlin, and it was all like East German training styles, and East Germans like former Soviet Union behind yeah. the wall and stuff, and it was like Russian stuff, and like you're doing fucking sixty rep bench presses and shit like that, like six sets of sixty reps, and it's like what the fuck is this? Yeah, you know? but but it worked. I, all, a lot of that old school stuff still works because it's. Mental, Ment- a lot of mental, mental right? But yeah. I think a lot of it was too, because like you burn out and you like you're like dead. And I think I don't know, I don't want to say it really, but I think back in those times they were using the the juice, yeah, you know, yeah, to very heal up. Yeah. Do you think uh, do you think that steroids is huge in boxing? Or yeah, it's still. Yeah. Is, they try to say it's not, but I think it still is. Yeah, I've always felt that um, the gear is like uh, it's just te- any other technology, right? It's whoever's got the best. Who can hide it? Yeah, exactly, right? It's not necessarily the steroids, it's the masking agents. Then they come out with something new and they go, hey, man, you want to keep your stuff hidden? You better start taking this yeah. shit or you're going to get caught, right? Well, it's a, it's a massive, massive in- industry, Imagine right? the money yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy, especially in, in Russia. I get, what was the name of that? I watched this documentary on... Um, Lance Armstrong? Uh, yeah. It wasn't Armstrong. It was it was a cycling one, though. Oh, yeah? And it was, it was how the Russians were hiding all the, uh, the... the doping and stuff like that. And, like, it was crazy like I remember about those olymp the last winter was it the winter olympics when they came out they weren't allowing the russians to yeah they had yeah. like athletes from russia instead of russia now because like those athletes went to the vada and said we want to compete but we can't so yeah they like pretty- said <laughs> okay you're not russia anymore you're athletes <laughs> of russia they, they, they competed under like the international banner or something like yeah that. something yeah, weird yeah, like that it was. Like, it's like weird. the ioc is some the it's money too. Yeah, it's the most crooked it's money. sporting yeah. organization in the Huge. world. It's yeah. crazy. Like you watch their am- you watch their amateur boxing. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, were you guys just, guy just win that fight? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's uh, it's crazy that even an amateur like things can be that corrupt. You know, in one side when no one's the am- the fighters even they're not even getting paid. It's just uh, man, it's fucked. And I know kids that lose little fights, and it's it's already political here when you're fighting in Ontario, and kids yeah. quit because they lost the fight against somebody who they should have won, and yeah. they go fuck this shit. Yeah, I I see it happening uh, in jujitsu all the time. I'm like, par- it's there is politics involved, and it's in coaching and parenting. Where like it's in sports, you're just like people ruin it for their kids all yeah, the time. You see it in time. hockey, you see it in every sport, right? Yeah. Uh, 
Did you play any other sports when you were growing up? No, not really, because it was. I had a funny childhood. Because when I was seven, I moved to Germany, so I never really got into hockey or football or any of that. Yeah. And then I moved to Germany, and I'm I'm kind of too big for soccer, so I kind of never played. Oh that. man, I sucked you'd be, that. you're natural. You'd be a good goalie, you know, like take the <laughs> shots. But other than that, I, I kind of didn't like anything. And I yeah, yeah, I one day I tried boxing, and I just fell in love with it. And that was pretty much this. I'm not cut out for team sports, and then I just, maybe that too. I'm not yeah, a team just, player. Yeah, I got out yeah. and tried like martial arts, and I was like, ooh. Yeah, this is so, fun. You get yeah. to punch people. You get to hit people. Like, <clears throat> fuck. Right yeah. on. Uh, so you were born here, right? I was born here, yeah. Oh, okay. And then I moved to Germany when I was seven, and then I came back here when I was 17. Why'd you guys come back here? Um, I, Just my fam, my dad, and my our business. We just yeah. cha- time to change things up and came back. That's cool. And just one brother? Uh, no, I got two brothers and oh, a sister, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Actually, two sisters. Yeah. Are you Who's the oldest? Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest. Yeah, man. okay. Everyone just kind of trickled down yeah, from there. Yeah, your brother, your brother, 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 sister, yeah. Yeah, all right. Because your brother was a boxer too, right? Johnny was into boxing too, yeah. He won the Canadian Championships. Yeah, right on. Amateur, yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right, let's, uh, well, give me your thoughts. If we just woke up this morning to uh, Mayweather versus uh, uh, the believe, Japanese guy. Yeah, properly. His name is Tenshin. Tension uh, Nasukawa, I believe. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I I can't. I think it's hilarious. I don't know the rules of the bout or whatever. Yeah, else. it's not you released. Mean, like, it, who, yeah. who cares? But I think it's amazing that um, all this talk about him fighting this guy, that guy, and, and Dana White being involved in all in Vegas. And then he's like, eh, I'm, I'm fighting this Japanese. I'm fighting tension. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the tension. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird too because the only thing that is confirmed and is with nothing really but Floyd posted a picture and I was, I was showing him before we started and he's got one boxing glove on and one MMA glove on uh, so I think he's just trying to play the, the he's, he's just smart. trying to play everybody and who, and, yeah and who knows what it is the, the whole world will watch him do it right like uh, he'll he'll get his money get the gate and everything else and they make 300 million guaranteed Ooh. again what the hell I read, man I read that and I'm like thinking like hey man as much as it's like we say, it's like a disrespect to the sport and all that. It's entertainment. It, that's yeah. what that is. It's not, it, yeah, right. And he's gonna sell it and he's gonna do it. And yeah, they're gonna sure. buy it. Yeah, the uh, yeah, it is. It really is. Like, and he is the biggest. Sport. Somehow he does it, man. Yeah. Like I don't know. I, I, whether you like him or hate him, you you still buy somebody. You're watching it. Yep, I know. I probably will. Um, <laughs> see what, we'll see. What, yeah, someone will watch it. Like over there, it'll be a spectacle, right? Like oh, they, that guy's a superstar over there. Yeah. It was right. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. He's a little phenom or something. The only thing that's weird is it's on uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, always, J- J- uh, Japan is huge on their New Year's Eve shows every single year. They always uh, had a Pride New Year's Eve, a K One New Year's Eve. Like that's that's their, that thing. their thing. Is it a yeah. culture thing? Why? What, do you, can you explain uh, why? I I get again sports entertainment. I think of I remember um, is it, uh, at Satama? Is that at Satama? Does it say probably Super Arena? That the place yeah, holds some Super Arena. And it holds really like amazing. ninety thousand people. Yeah, like I remember. Um, that's wild. I think uh, Hoist fought Sakuraba, and I think it was probably their New Year's Eve show or whatever. But yeah, uh-huh. same thing. Like ninety thousand people watched a ninety minute fight. It was crazy. A ninety minute they fight. They fought for ninety minutes until Hoist. I think Hoist broke his leg and could couldn't get out of the <laughs> school or whatever, or something like that. It was oh, nuts. Man. The um, I go back and watch it every once in a while to real and be thankful that there's rounds like yeah. like and decisions now. So, um, yeah, man, I'll watch it. It's, I don't, it depends, like the rules or whatever else, like who even gives a shit? You, you're it's, taking the MMA yeah. world and the boxing world and they're throwing it together. And Japanese MMA is fucking awesome, man. It kind of gets overshadowed by the UFC over the last, especially over the last decade. Mm-hmm. But it's still amazing to watch, man. It's just, just great. I, like, I love watching them. They're freaks. Like, cause they're, they're what they are about the entertainment, right? It's not about the wins and losses. It's like, if you go, go, go out and throw if down. you give a good fight, you're yeah, yeah, coming you, back. You're yeah. coming back, right? So it's a wicked place to. That's the problem in boxing too. Like take a loss. It's such a big hit on it's your career. Huge. Man. Yeah. Right. It's all numbers. It's like, yeah. um, kickboxing is very similar to MMA too, where if you have a great performance, like you're going to, they're going to bring you back. Yeah. Right? I so, used to have a good friend, uh, Mark DeBont. He was, mm-hmm. uh, he did some boxing with us in Germany and he fought Bazooka Joe, I think, yep. from here and lost a close fight, I guess he said. Yeah, yeah. Bazooka's a f- fucking animal too. Yeah. So I never felt like, I I realized I know nothing about kickboxing when I went, I trained with him last year. I've never been like so humbled. It was awful. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Like, but that's like, he's a world champion. Like he's yeah. one of the best in the world for a reason, right? Like, yeah, man. You, you know, every once in a while you step in front of a guy and you're like, holy shit, like. Yeah, I'm out of my league. But MMA guys think they can box. MMA guys think they can kickbox and 
boxers think they can do MMA, and it's all just it's, a big yeah. old dick swinging contest anyway, right? Pretty much. So, yeah. Who's got well, the even uh, Khabib, dick, right? Khabib wants the the Mayweather fight now too, just like McGregor got it. Yeah. After he since he wins the belt, he wants the Mayweather fight. That doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't. But I know because he's known to be a good wrestler. It's yeah. like at least Connor was like a bit of a like he's a puncher in the MMA. Yeah. But like, a, but then you go like I was saying, like okay, you're an MMA striker. You're not a box like our specialty is box punching. Yeah. So like you're not gonna. Floyd's fought Shane Mosley. He's fought all these big names that can fucking really punch. Like he's not gonna get knocked out by uh, no. like you know. But those guys are all going for it because they want. It's the money. It's they the get that money, right? Thing. Like everyone, people still believe that uh, McGregor was in that fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like someone watching it from your point of view, you has been like, come on. <laughs> when the, somebody, I was watching it, and I think it was the second round. Connor hit him with a little uppercut. Yeah, and everyone was like, oh my god, he's gonna knock him out. And I was like, shut up. You man. know how many That's, times he's Floyd's been play, like Floyd bet on himself in the tenth round to win yeah. the fight, like like four hundred grand or something ridiculous. I would say millions. But the did you um the other thing too is like, have you ever seen? Him ever go forward ever in a fight? No, no, not once in his well, career. Early, he, earlier, yeah, actually, then, early in his okay. career, he was a killer. But he, uh, we were talking. He moved up a lot of weight classes. Yeah, he's actually he, he used to fight at I think one thirty. Yeah, he was really small. Yeah. And he moved up. He fought, and he fought a lot of big names back in the day. So he, he does. You gotta respect him, man. Yo, oh no, he's the greatest. It's like the greatest boxer there is. It's like, just now it's just entertainment. He's and and. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's got some wild habits and shit, and he needs to make that Probably, money. But yeah. like, you That's got what people that, are saying, yeah, yeah, you got that many yes men around you. You got to pay him, but yeah, but he's got a huge strip club apparently now, girls collection. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call Let's go it check days. it out. Yeah, might as well. Let's go. I just, uh, I, I would ride that wave until you couldn't. Like, why the hell would you? Why not? Man? Especially like when you're taking stupid fights like that. It's like, like, like he knew. McGregor wasn't going to touch him. Why wouldn't you get go out for a night and get a couple hundred million dollars? Fuck. Like, why not? Who's going to say no to that? Right? Yeah, it just uh, and then set up the next one in Tokyo. So good for him. And that's a, the two things I'm curious about with Ryzen. I wanted to ask you guys about this. And Ryzen, I think they're pretty. And I don't mean to out them or anything like that. But I'm pretty pretty sure they're open about like steroid use. Like athletes like Vitor Belfort and guys like that. They go go to that organization and have like a kind of like the, a resurgence. Um, Japan has always been kind of. They do do whatever Just you want. Other way, kind of yeah, thing? well, they only have to. I don't think they're. I think their amateur sports are probably real, like similar to us, where like there's. You're not tech? Spoke, yeah, I think they're pro. Like if you look at Pride back in the day, the the beauty oh, of, yeah. the beauty of the J- Japanese <laughs> MMA is it is pro wrestling, but it's real. Mm-hmm. Like those guys go. They had pro wrestlers fighting fighting in, in MMA. MMA guys, right? <laughs> you, there's. Do you ever see Crow Cop knock out that guy in the in the luchador mask? Oh my god, it was hideous, man! Really? Like, yeah, the guy comes. He's a pro, huge pro wrestler in Japan. They're superstars over there. He, he yeah. fought Krokop in a luchador mask. Yeah, he walked out in the mask and he fought. Yeah, up. look it up. He got knocked the fuck out. It was amazing. Yeah, kind of terrifying to watch, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it always like, like huge mismatches and like. Yeah, just, I love that Krokop Bob Sapp fight. Yeah, because shit like that. Yeah. Bob Sapp's still going. He's like, but he's like a monster. But yeah. like he's such a, a, again pro wrestling, right? Like he's not, he, yeah, he's not a fighter. Like no, you know? he goes out, and gets kicked a couple times, and falls and down. Cries. Yeah. I think he's uh, he's probably lost fifteen in a row or some shit really, like yeah. that. Yeah, but just collecting a paycheck. Big, yeah, big organizations will fly him over and he makes good money probably doing it right. So uh, I think it's probably the only money he makes. That's why he still does it, right? Because yeah. at some point you got to call it a day. But whatever. I uh, I've always liked Japanese MMA for that because there's like competitive organizations like Shudo, and then Risen and uh, and Pride and all these big ones are just like yeah, it's just gong shows like just. Don't kill, give a kill, fuck. Kill, is. Killing midgets and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even this, I'm, I found it now. It's uh, the the video is a total of about a minute long, and uh, there's 20 seconds left. I'm assuming Crow Cox would get his hands oh, on no, him. He just this is ridiculous. Yeah. He's got a luchador mask on. It looks, it looks like a like a professional wrestler. They just picked off a of WWE and they put him against Crow yeah. Cop. Like, could you imagine? Ray yeah. Mysterio is Crow Cop, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, shit. I told you. Yeah, head kicks him. That's just not. Yeah. They're, they're peeling the mask off, trying to see if he's uh, yeah. bleeding or anything. It's, it's, it's the mask is on there to keep his shit together. <laughs> they're like, oh no. This it's on. It's not good for TV. Yeah, the helmet. The oh helmet God, isn't to, the motorcycle helmet isn't to save your head. It's to yeah. fucking keep it. Oh my so God. They have something hand back to your family. I know it's crazy <laughs> when I seen like uh, when I seen Bob Sapp crying in some fights. I knew it was a little wild, but I, yeah. I never. I didn't know it was that bad. It, well, it's a guy like that. He's probably like that because he doesn't have anything else, right? And you're just going out every couple months to get the shit beat out of you and just yeah. to get, make a couple grand and that's it, right? So. Yeah. Like it's uh, plus all the gear and everything else he's ever been on and whatever. Like who yeah. knows what he's a mon- yeah. yeah he's a he's a fucking alien that guy yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, was go back and watch Japanese M- MMA. It's 
fucking fantastic. I have to start getting into that yeah, one. It's, yeah, I'm pretty is, sure it's all available on Fight Pass now. I think they yeah, they bought, UFC bought Pride, so yeah, they have all of it. I yeah. gotta get that then. Antonio, my buddy Antonio, you know Tony. He was um he was at the press conference in Tokyo when the UFC announced uh, the Pride announced that they sold to the UFC. He was in the same room with all the gangsters and the and Dana White and everything. Just for he just, uh, wow. all shaking their hands and stuff. No one knew what was going on. They just walked in. They sat down. They're like, "What the fuck?" And they're like, "Well, yeah, we're selling to these guys." And they're like, "Oh, because Pride was the best, man." And then yeah. UFC just had the better marketing plan and took over the whole planet. So, yeah, what are you gonna do? Um, when is the uh, when is the Tyson Fury fight? December first. Oh yeah, shit, that's right around the corner. Yeah, right? My birthday, yeah, man. Yeah, it's cool. Be good. Where is it? Is it in the UK? Sta- no, Staples Center in LA. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Who's your money on? Fuck, it's such a hard one, man. It's uh, Wilder's the fucking knockout artist, and Tyson's the fucking he's hard good. to hit guy. And yeah, he's, he's a good boxer, slick boxer, and I, I got, I say. Fuck, man. I say my money's on Tyson. That, that, I'm agreeing with you. I just you. think he's going to, even though with all the weight loss and all that stuff, like, I know that goes against in the time off, but, like, uh, like let's just say Sugar Ray Leonard came back after, like, I think two years of being retired, and he yeah. came and beat Marvin Hagler, and Marvin Hagler was the best middleweight, yeah. and he was a heavy puncher, yeah. and Sugar Ray just fucking outboxed him and got yeah. away with it and did it. And I feel like Tyson might do something Yeah, like I that. think if you're really disciplined against an animal like like Wilder, that you have a you have a good chance. All those but punches he's going to throw, it costs a lot of energy, right? And yeah, yeah, for sure. What uh, So what was it, the Joshua fight with Wilder? They just couldn't come to terms or someone's running from That's the other? That's by the sound of it. Like um, Wilder saying they had 50 million, like they would give Joshua 50 million, come to America, fight Wilder, but... Joshua didn't want that, or Eddie Hearn didn't want that. I don't know. I think it's kind of a thing like, fuck, man. Joshua sells out arenas in England. Yeah, why would you go anywhere people. else? Why would you leave? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Same with, we could build, we could fucking let this fight get a bit bigger, even, yeah, yeah. and make everybody want it even more. So I think they're just kind of milking it. And yeah, waiting for I don't the think right. uh, whether it's whether it's Wilder or uh, it's both Tyson, I like they. They're both gonna sell that yeah, fight. It doesn't wins. matter. Yeah, but then there's the guy. So I was in the Ukraine sparring Yusik, and he's talking about going up to heavyweight. Yeah, and he actually said he wants to fight Anthony Joshua. And the way things are looking is he might get to fight him next year in November. Holy and if shit. he fights him in November, he might fuck up that whole Wilder Joshua thing because he's so skilled. He might take. He might outbox the big yeah, guy. Yeah. You know? What um, what what's the cutoff for cruiserweight? Uh, two hundred pounds. Okay, and then it's like and, light heavyweight, and then and, uh, and then where's he jump from there? Cool. And nothing. No really, limit. eh? Boxers, no limit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that, yeah. man. In the amateurs, I fought a guy who was I was two hundred and forty or two thirty, and he was three hundred and twenty pounds, man. <laughs> Big like a fridge, like it was. He wasn't in great shape, but he was just fucking it. He punched me with a hook, and I like I fucking had to take three <laughs> steps over, you know. Yeah, just and I, could, I didn't knock him out. I broke his jaw because I couldn't. He just wouldn't go down, man. It was crazy. Fuck that. Yeah. I remember I fought this guy. We used to do, uh, uh, <laughs> we do like, uh, we just invite guys to the gym and just fight them because we yeah. just wanted to practice, right? And I fought this guy and he was like, I was fighting at 170 and this guy was 6'6, six, six, <laughs> like 240 pounds. I can't remember the guy's fucking name now, but like they, they told me that like, this guy's pretty big. I'm like, I don't care. Fuck me. We just fuck need, we need, yeah, we need some fucking target practice. Bring him in. He walked in. I was like, Oh fuck me. What did I do? And then I, but I, it worked out fine. I kicked him in the legs a couple of times and double legged him. And then just got on top. Cause he didn't, he was just a big goon. He didn't know what he was yeah, doing. He so know. like, I remember hitting him in the face and he's like making these weird noises. Like he was trying to eat my hands. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, all right. So I just kept hitting him. And then eventually they just jumped in and peeled it off. I missed the fucking early two thousands. It was best. You can just do anything. We just go to other people's clubs and fight them and fuck it. And I used they, to love like the gym wars. Like oh yeah, in boxing. Always. We used to always like we you'd go to another gym and it's like actual war. You're like yeah. trying to smash this motherfucker. It's like yeah. and they're and they're like you're in my home. We're gonna fuck you up. Totally. Like, I I was telling this when Cook was in. We like I went with him one night to do some sparring mm-hmm. down in Ajax and they brought someone in from him. I'm like you guys are fucking nuts, man. This is supposed to be a practice. Like can't we all? Just get Your along. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Jesus, guys, have a fucking smoke a joint and chill out. Like, like, <laughs> just just mashing each other. But we used to train like that when we were young, too, like full of piss and vinegar, all, everyone trying to kill each other in your own gym, right? And yeah. like now I'm like, well, heart, spar, like hard spar, like maybe a couple times per fight, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you get to pick up the pace, but you can't go out cracking each other every 
No. Not, she's not learning anything, right? Yeah. If uh, I think if you're gonna find out if you got a chin or not, you should probably just wait till game day and then. <laughs> like, probably yeah, yeah. Might as well get paid for it. Yeah, to get exactly. Out, yeah. Like, because really, it's you. If you're getting knocked out in practice anyway, like you're, you're yeah, yeah, you're getting knocked out with big gloves. You better you're not yeah. So, you know. but yeah, if I'm gonna find if I'm gonna take a hard one in the chin, I'm gonna wait till I'm getting my two hundred yeah. two hundred dollars or whatever. Uh, it's I don't know. Like in Germany, when we had like boxing camps, it was kind of cool because they have like a real system to it, and like yeah. they kind of do like three weeks before the fight those two like so one week before the fight it's pretty much an easy week and then yeah. the two weeks prior to that they're kind of just like hard sparring weeks and it's just pure like guys are trying to tear your head off and it's so you get live punches thrown at you because like yeah. we're always just fucking around sparring like you know what i mean like we're working oh, you gotta together. feel the pressure it's yeah. not the same because like my punch will be a split second slower that way and you can yeah. see it but like if somebody's trying to nail you then it's different right yeah. so like they do kind of like in boxing for like the bigger fights they do kind of ramp it up a bit yeah that's that what, that's what we do as well it's like it's like two or three weeks out it's like real you hard sessions yeah, just and to, then the we you know 10 days out you're like all right let's it's light, time to chill, light yeah. and pads let's and get strong and again, yeah yeah but um yeah, get strong again. That's, that's the best way to put it because you're doing a six, eight week camp. Like by the oh, time you're, you're done, dead, you're fucking man. mangled, you're fucking right? Dead. So you need that last like two weeks you to like. You cannot get wait it till it's over, man. Yeah, then you get your strength back. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you just like you should feel like dog shit two weeks out from your fight. If if you don't, you didn't do it. You right. didn't do enough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's uh once you learn that um, process as well, then you're way more confident because like guys, the first time people go through that, they panic. They're like, fuck, I feel oh, horrible. Never, how am I going to do? Yeah. 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 And then I'm like, no, I trust the system. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden you do and you're fucking this guy up. And you're yeah. Like, Sweet. Yeah. You know? You're praying the other guy isn't doing it right. But then it's fucked. Cause then, you, then later on you'll have a camp and you, you don't even feel like you're, you, you, ha you went through a hard camp and you're like, huh, I'm not even that dead. Like last yeah. time. It's kind of weird. And you're like, you know, did, and then, uh, did, if you have one like that, do you come up flat? Do you ever find kind of like f not flat? I would say, but kind of just not as strong and yeah. not like maybe. Yeah, I guess flat's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Body does weird things, man. You never really know. Like, like you, we have a system that we try to use every single time, but it does not. Nothing's foolproof. Yeah, everything changes. Yeah, right? like for sure. Like anything in your life, whether you're, like you're, you're getting older, shit yeah. just changes, right? Yeah, your for balls sure. are hanging lower. You know, <laughs> <laughs> my, my dick got bigger out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. This world is insane. Yeah. <laughs> What else? Uh, uh, so, what else you got over there, Joshua? Well, it's been some time, so we can uh, definitely talk about the Ben Askren and Mighty Mouse trade. Oh, yeah, We're yeah, talking okay. a little bit about that. Yeah, that's that fucking before. wild, eh? It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, first uh, trade in MMA history. Well, major trade anyway that I, like no, that anyone would pay attention. To. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, to me personally, I think it's a shame that um, Mighty Mouse is gone, but because he went to it was it's one championship oh, yeah, it's I believe one, yeah. yes, it's one. apparently yeah. the UFC of Asia yeah is, it, is, it, is, it is it's huge, huge man. Yeah. huge but it's huge for smaller weight classes mm -hmm. it's like Shudo was back in the early 2000s perfect for DJ <laughs> yeah right so he's got guys to compete and have exciting real fights real competition over. yeah and he had real competition here but like he was never loved you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think he's the pound for pound greatest ever and uh, and no one gave him any respect because he's 125 you know what I mean and uh, Ben Askren he wasn't getting the love over there because he's kind of like he was and he wasn't right. The UFC wasn't wasn't, wasn't hiring because he's they think he's boring, but he can talk some shit. Like he could really this guy can really talk. He's some been shit. going off on Twitter. It's amazing. Yeah, I think he's I think he's challenged every single man, woman, and child <laughs> in, in every weight class. He's, yeah, man, but I child. really don't think like because he'll fight a welterweight and that's Tyrone, right? That's yeah, and he's talking actually. He's talking about being the guy to bring in the 165 uh, weight yeah. class and readjust those to go 55, 65, 75, 85. Yeah. All make some weight classes. Yeah, make yeah. a new belt. That's yeah. the one thing they need to do in the UFC. The weight classes are What do they got? Big. They got like 15. It goes oh, so 55 pounds. Every 15 pounds. pounds. Yeah, yeah, and it's boxing, 20. it's like every four pounds. I yeah, think, so, yeah, so it's 25, 35, uh, 25, 35, 45, 55, then it jumps to 70, mm. 85. And then 205. 205. That's where it gets weird. It's, yeah. it's like, it's, it seems like it makes sense until it gets to 70. And yeah. then you're jumping then 15, jumps, 20 pounds. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. weird. It, they, it would solve, you know what? It wouldn't solve the weight cut problem because people are just going to cut anyway. People would cut even more. They would yeah. cut, they would be, oh, fuck, I can make those two more pounds, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. But, at the same time, but then like you'll have the problem like boxing, you'll have all those weight classes and you have too many champions and then it's like. I think that's, pro that's a good point. That's part of the reason the they, they, why they keep it the way it is, right? Because how many characters are you going to build? 
You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like no one, especially with MMA, no one actually gives a fuck if you're the champion of the world, right? No. Like, and the promoters don't. They give a fuck if you sell tickets because that's all that matters. Right? Johnson, Mighty Mouse, was the best fighter in the world, but he couldn't sell tickets, so mm-hmm. he, that's why he's gone. What do you think about the comments that he left because he didn't like all the McGregor and Khabib, like the spectacle where people are just and Colby, for instance, people being disrespectful for no reason? I uh, I believe that it's a shame. Yeah, I think that uh, the one thing you like about Mighty Mouse is he doesn't really talk. You know what I mean? Like personally, I like it. I don't need all the, the extra hype. Yeah, then. the fluff mm-hmm. with it, like. I, well, you um, appreciate him for his fighting. You yeah, I, he, the, he was a genius. That's what he mm-hmm. was amazing to watch. It's like the, he could do things that you'd never even think he of. Finished, the slam yeah, to arm bar? Yeah, like, like he would finish fights oh, yeah, yeah. with stuff that you'd never even seen it, right? Yeah. And he could do it in live action in the biggest stage, right? He was a genius in uh, in like changing his game plan and as he went and whatever else. I thought was, but so hopefully he goes and he gets some some good competition over there like and I hope he gets fucking paid because UFC wasn't paying him fucking a- shit apparently the really? rumor is the, the contract's seven figures good uh, possibly even eight let me double check because Eddie Alvarez just went over there as well mm-hmm. wow. and mm-hmm. they are because they, they might one championship might have a, a legitimate like case to sell some pay-per-views now because they have between um, Alvarez mm-hmm. and Mighty Mouse pair those two guys on a card that's not too bad for your co-main and your main event right? well yeah think about it like this too it's like uh, do, you, do you guys know what the Biggest selling beer in the entire world is take a wild guess. You you can't Budweiser, Budweiser. not That's even enough. fucking no. in the top hundred, my friends. The biggest selling beer in the entire world is in fucking China. You know why? Because there's two billion Chinese. Because there's yeah, fucking there's two billion point. Chinese people, <laughs> right? That's the whole point, right? So like, where we think the UFC is like the biggest thing in the entire world here for MMA, anyways. Like, yeah. no, it's big in North America because we've only got fucking. I don't know, 300 million people That's, or whatever yeah. it is. Like, all those people, everyone in North America lives in one fucking city in fucking Asia. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many more people and, and more endorsements and more money and whatever else. Like, um, they're in, much. In boxing, actually, top rank bought an Olympic champion who was a Chinese guy yeah. and they, he started putting on shows in Macau. It's like the Vegas of yeah, China. Yeah, yeah. And man, he was like, the numbers there were stupid because like people would buy it and like, it, there's like you said, there's so many Chinese people. There's, there's, it's a, uh, it's a mass there. Asia. <laughs> yeah. Asia's, I can relate anything to beer. Every, Asia is fucking enormous. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's huge. Like yeah. there's more people in Tokyo than there is in Canada. You yeah. know what I mean? So like it's, they just did the same thing with cell phones. Like have you guys heard of Huawei cell phones? I have a yeah. Huawei man. Do you have one? Oh, okay. You go, go, let me see bro. this thing. I've never seen one in real life before. This is amazing. Huawei. It's like in China, real life. They just made their own <laughs> iPhone. And now the, the, bro, it's, it's not supposed to be better than the iPhone. It's not legal in the States because they yeah. think that the Chinese are trying to spy on us. Of course. Yeah. And they yeah. are, yeah. obviously. But is, is, it, is it a better phone? You can tell us. I, I don't know, man. Like, I just got, Get what me. happened to me was, man, I got tired of my iPhone. Always, You always need a charger and you're always. Mine is shit right now. I'm just like, throttling like, that You buy the stupid cables and it fucking says this, this accessory is not supported yeah. and all that shit. And I just get tired of it. And then I just fucking said one day. I need a new phone. I went and checked. iPhone was fifteen hundred. That's like eight hundred, and it's like good Huawei, man. I was like, it's the way to go, Huawei. Yeah. <laughs> Get you, they're getting endorsements from that. Yeah, there's, your new, there's your new sponsor. Yeah, like mm-hmm. everyone. We live in a bubble, right? Where mm-hmm. we live here, like. So people forget how big the fucking world was, and most of the people in the world don't live in North America. Yeah. You know what I mean? They live in fucking. South, like in Asia and in, in, in India and stuff like that, like these cities, is, yeah. countries are absolutely enormous. Yeah. So they're, yeah, you can, good for good for guys like Johnson and Alvarez to go over there and get mm-hmm. fucking get what because you're at the end of your run anyway, right? Get what go, they deserve. Yeah, I just seen what, it says Alvarez is an eight figure deal and DJ's is expected to be more than that, so nine maybe ten wow. figures for DJ. So I don't know how much money that is, guys. I suck at math, but good for both those dudes. I, I get it depends if it's in. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, it could be in pesos. Whatever. What the yeah. hell do we know? Right? Yeah. So, pesos, AJ, like, that makes sense. Eight, yeah, eight, yeah. eight figures in yen. You're like, shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't remember what the rate is. I know, on like yen. in Ukraine, it was like $1 is 25 of theirs. And it Holy was like, shit. they gave me like food money. And it was like, they gave me like 7,000 of their money. And I was like, oh man, I'm fucking, it's a lot of money. And I'm like, Go to the, and we're always eating in the hotel and it's always like five hundred something. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, is this? Holy like, shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, uh, Thailand's bought and you're like, I got a brick of money. Stack of money. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I can't, I can't get shit. Yeah, yeah, I can't get shit for Go it. Go there so. for the Instagram photos, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. baller. Yeah, it's fucking Thailand. Make it tri- Thailand strip club rich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, fuck, man. I hope those guys get paid what they're worth. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. especially when you put in that much time and effort, like. Alvarez came to the UFC in, uh, from Pride? Yeah, he came from Pride and, and whatever else. He came from over there. Oh, and he Bellator as well. Yeah, I think and he's won at Bellator, both everywhere yeah. except and, for... Uh, yeah, so I was like, 
and they kind of the UFC has a kind of thing where they they try to buy guys up and prove a point from other organizations. Like they'll let guys leave, and whatever if they put in the time. Other than that, they just bury him and fucking try to make people forget they existed. But Alvarez is one of the greatest fucking there is. If if you have a chance, go watch Alvarez versus Joaquin Hansen. It's one of the most insane fucking things you've ever seen. It's one of the greatest fights in history. That's uh, Dream thing. Three. I'm looking at the list right now. Uh, Dream, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's Dream, Bodog, Bellator. Mm. Ring of Combat, if you go really far back. Yeah, every every uh, organization in the list, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a, he's yeah, yeah, guy throws bombs and brings in. I love the way he fights. So yeah, he I made it to the top two. He fought McGregor, and you know he was the fit, he was the champion in the UFC. So yeah. like, yeah, why not go and get money? Yeah, for sure. And with Johnson, I'm like, yeah, he deserves to be paid based on like the skills because right? that's what is a uh, martial arts uh, martial is supposed to be. Yeah, you know what I mean so. Overly. Do you think that'll create a shift at all? Like with DJ going to one and Eddie going to one and now with Bellator as well becoming so popular, do you think it'll create a shift where if you don't want to be part of the spectacle, you just go to these other organizations? Uh, uh, you know what it is? I, uh, it doesn't, the spectacle doesn't, ima- it doesn't matter. It's going to happen wherever you go. Like they have to pump up the fight one way or the other. What it does is um, for, it builds free agency power. You know what I mean? Kind of builds like, it puts Dana in a position where you might have to pay guys better because like, that's you don't uh, want to fuck you don't want to pay me proper i'll go, I'll go that's to exactly it. and that's why guys are, have left like and gone to bellator right yeah. because now the uh reebok deal like they this, can't have sponsors on your shit no now? it's just reebok only and their fucking payout is horrible really man. yeah, yeah champion if, makes 40 grand yeah that's wow. it yeah so you're the best fighter in the world you can only make forty thousand dollars in endorsement you have a good night in bellator even at, like even as a regional guy you could you could fucking make that if you have, yeah yeah you mean if you got the right connections and people backing you up you can make that like yeah, in Bellator and Bellator had runs uh they, they, Bellator still runs 50 something shows a year you know what I mean yeah they got they're always yeah, got something going on because they're casino there. shows right yeah so you don't have to have these big huge pay-per-views I think they, Bellator's on Dazzin too right yeah I got yeah. Dazzin and I see it all the time is yeah, that worth that is Dazzin yeah. good oh bro it's yeah, like hey. uh, all, mm-hmm. everything man it's got it's basketball money. it's they got Canelo fucking, like 350 million for 11 like fights and for, yeah. yeah but Floyd Floyd posted right after they made that contract Floyd's like I made that in one night. So. <laughs> <laughs> they got all the like if you're into, like levels. they got Champions <laughs> Leagues on right now. They got Major League Baseball. They got everything, man. It's fucking. It's pretty live. All the boxing fights. A lot of big UFC cards. Here's MMA. Fucking MMA is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like boxing. I like your phone though. <laughs> it's a Huawei, man. It's, it's where it's at. Next big Apparently, thing. that's what they're saying. It's all fun and games till we get invaded, and it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. I know for sure. <laughs> like, you're, the, you're the one that opened it's the my gates fault, to yeah. North America. Gates to hell. Fucking Germans. Hey, wrecking everything. German spy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Chinese spies. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, just getting blacklisted. <laughs> so you got nothing lined up right now. You said you're just gonna nothing chill concrete. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna chill, but I'm gonna train. I'm gonna get in big, yeah. good shape. I'm. I'm hoping for a big fight. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Do you do you feel you still like improve as a boxer like all the time? Like, bro, I went to this Ukraine thing and the first week was tough. I was like, holy fuck! And then on my last sparring, I did really well. And it was one of those days I, I came to the gym the day before I ran in the wrong shoes on. You know, you ever run with like boxing shoes on a treadmill? No, I'm not an idiot. I was kind of stupid and I thought, eh, I'm just gonna go upstairs and do this. And then I I was like, I want to run, so I ran on the treadmill and it was. You know, you can't run yeah. like the heel toe. So I was just running on my toes and my calves are burning the fuck up. And I, I do some shadow boxing and I'm like, okay, oh, I think I got to chill. This, I'm going to be fucked tomorrow for sparring. Last sparring. Show up. Fucking Ukrainian TV stations there. Like, of course. Everybody's, everybody's there. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to look like a pile of dog shit right now, right? And then like, I actually did fucking the best I've ever done with him. And I was like... And then afterwards, the trainer came to me and was like, you evolved as a fighter in this good. camp. And so yeah. I, I got to say, I, I still grow. So it's cool. Oh, that's cool. That's good. I think that um, as you get older as a fighter, I think one of the things that when you're younger and you're training and competing and whatever else is like, you can feel yourself getting better all oh, the yeah. time. You know what I mean? That's one of the best things about it. It's like, I always like winning is always awesome. Yeah. Right. But like when you can feel yourself like, holy shit, I couldn't do that last year. You know what I mean? And like bigger, stronger, better technique. Like, yeah. And it's also fun. When you get to go train with guys, you're you're not. We're above you, your level, and they pull yeah. you. They make you better, right? Yeah. And um, like you said, like winning is like the greatest high. I think, anyways. Like, yeah, it's amazing. I think I called out. You think put a guy to sleep. It's like you're fucking. Yeah. You know. Oh, I man, I got my first knockout this year. It was fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I'm retiring undefeated. There you go, man. Um, yeah, it is. I, the, I'm gonna do a kickboxing fight now too. You should. 
Why not? Yeah. Well, let's get this out of the way, and then we'll find someone who can coach you up a little bit. Well, yeah. Kick some legs, for sure. You'd be good at it. Probably. Size 15 feet. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah, fuck. I don't know. Like, um, yeah, the progression of martial arts and, and combat sports always makes you feel good. Because, like, a lot of people, like I just said, what, they just want to win. I'm like, improving. And yeah, it's that's fun. a great. It's a great. And, like, to be honest, man, it slows down when you get, like, to a certain level. Like, I've yeah. been boxing for 15 years. And it's like, you're always doing the same shit. And you kind of go, like, oh, fuck, I can't wait to fight again. And then you're fighting. And you win. And you're like, ah, it's just another win. And then yeah. until you get a big fight where it's actually... You know, but then like this kind of stuff where I go to this camp and I actually see myself get better. It's yeah. kind of like, wow, there's well, still room for improvement. For sure. You're forced in a, into a place, too, where you're like you get complacent with the same people around exactly, you all the exactly. time. Same spar partner, same trainers, whatever else. And then you get to go somewhere there where like you're kind of uh, you're yeah, you're under the pressure a little bit. you got to perform and and a little bit out of your other elements so like you have to adapt or you're way out of your element yeah. and i'm like laying in bed like oh fuck i'm sparring tomorrow i'm gonna get fucked up you're thinking yeah. in your head like i haven't been with a guy like this for a while and you yeah. know and then you're like Bob, shit i didn't do that bad you know uh, that's a good confidence booster for sure yeah. yeah for sure what's he what's that guy walk around at he's 210 okay so he's, he's not he's not a, that's the thing he's not a heavyweight yet yeah. he's he's going to heavyweight this fight he's fighting his last fight as a cruiserweight he's fighting yeah. tony bellow and tony bellow knocked out david hay twice <laughs> So he's the he's known as the bomber. He can punch. Yeah. Um, I say Usyk's gonna win. He's gonna. Uh, he's very technical, very smart fighter. So I think he'll outmaneuver him and mm -hmm. hopefully stop him. But right that's on. My, and then he wants to go to and then he wants to go to heavyweight and fight Joshua later on. So that's. I think you're gonna have to get in line for that one a little bit. But who knows, right? Whatever yeah. wherever the money is, right? Yeah. I don't know. I like uh, the boxing world is completely fucking. It is weird to me. So, it's weird. Yeah. I agree. But uh, whatever. A 60, 16 and two. Yeah, I'm do. 16 and two. I, uh, if I have a couple more like good fights, I can move like hopefully get yeah. a world, like, not a world. I'm I'm saying like a, I used to have the IBF international belt, yeah. which put me in the top 15. I'd like to have something like that, yeah. and then that puts you in place in line for a title yeah. shot like that. Is know? there a bunch? Is there a lot of Americans that are free to line um, up against? There's a few, but they're kind of. I don't know, man. It's like they come with these stupid offers, and it's just like yeah, yeah it's it was, not it's you, not worth it to me, you know. Yeah, you have to get. You're at the point now in your life where you have to get paid, right? Or kind of, man. I got two kids. I got, yeah. you know, I got, you're taking a lot of risks for yeah. nothing. It's kind of gets to the point where yeah, you're like, like Fuck, no, for sure. Gotta... Like you, it is a bit like, it is a business. You're an entrepreneur. you got to yeah. get your money now. Like it's not, you're not doing amateur shit anymore. Like you got to exactly, get, you got to put food on the table, right? So yeah. how old are your kids? My son's four. My daughter's eight months. Oh, your son. You see his son, man. He's like the same fucking size yeah, as you. Man. He's a truck. <laughs> like, yeah, he's a, he comes around into the gym sometime. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, he's man. terrifying little human being. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's totally, he's totally you. Eh? It's going to be. Yeah, cool. it's going to be. I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to put him in yet. Like, cause I want, like, you know, you kind of go like, oh, I'd like, like first you're like, oh, my kid's going to box. And then you're like, no, oh, fuck that, man. No. That's the stupidest thing you could ever do, man. Like, <laughs> I'm put the him same in way. like basketball, golf. Yeah. Tennis, I don't know. My son was doing jujitsu for like a while, and you could tell he wasn't feeling it, and whatever else. And like this, this life is hard too. Like it's hard, bro. Yeah. There's nothing harder, man. Yeah. What I, school did you go to? School of Hard Knocks? Is yeah, that the school? Yeah, exactly. You know? Right. And like, even like building a gym and fighting and building a gym and all this shit, dude. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Like, it's the best, but it sucks. You know. Well, it's because it's your passion, right? Like yeah. if it's his passion. That's one thing, but it, yeah. Well, that's it. You don't want you don't want people go. Oh, that's Frankie's kid thinking automatically he's going to box and there's a lot of pressure that comes with stuff like that too yeah. like i'm glad my son decided to go with basketball or whatever else because like you know what i mean man like, and then you get university paid for if you're good at it yeah like that kind of yeah. shit like that's i wish i had something like that yeah you know? yeah I'd, i just gotta punch people it's it's cool it's, but it's all right it's cool. <laughs> i don't mind it i don't mind the world and punch people it's yeah, pretty it's cool not too but, bad you know what, uh, Josh, what do you got on you there? Do we already spill the beans and everything we need? Uh, we did a bunch of the one thing. Well, obviously, Daniel Cormier just defended his belt over the weekend. I don't know if you had a chance to watch that fight against Derek Lewis. I already just put a just, beat down. I, yeah, you figured people were just going to be like, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be the yeah. same thing. But um, he, he's the first person, to, first double champ to defend uh, both belts. No, oh, that's pretty good. Like, yeah. they, like, he just he is the guy that doesn't really get enough credit as well. I think yeah, Cormier, he's a like, small like, guy for like heavyweight. Too, uh, huh? He's like five eleven. Really yeah, yeah. He's, he's like he likes he likes his he likes his Popeyes as well. <laughs> yeah, he like he can tell, uh, but he he likes to eat. But the uh, dude, he, he didn't you didn't qualify for the Olympics or, or even I think he competed at the Olympics. Hey, you're yeah, you're yeah, a savage. I think his body shut down one time. Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. weight cut or really? something like that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but if you can make it do it a sport, uh, Olympics in any sport, you're a freak of fucking. Yeah, you're a freak of nature. nature for yeah, sure. if you're right. So for him to, especially for a guy that 
like compete your whole life in one sport and then and be that elite and then learn how to box and all these other and jiu-jitsu and everything all on top like after the fact Mm -hmm. like you're you're a freak yeah Yeah. so i think i think he's yeah i don't know who he's who's he's gonna fight a heavyweight like he's they're saying either brock lesnar or they're gonna do the john jones fight he he only wants one more and then he's gonna retire yeah he wants to retire before his 40th birthday well he called out brock right at the fight yeah, yeah. yeah He'll be just Brock might not make it because that Roman Reigns guy. I, this goes a little, a little deep into the WWE, but the, well, their main star uh, had to leave because he's battling leukemia. Yeah, uh, he's been battling that, for yeah. eleven years, so now Brock might have to step into the role and kind of like take he's on more responsibilities. But he just won the whatever the title means over there. Wow. They gave it to him. I yeah. didn't win it. But. I think I think uh, I think Lesnar is better off to stay fucking retired yeah, yeah. against. Yeah, he'll get fucking smashed. That'd be a strange him. fight for his legacy as well, because he'll get picked apart. Like DC will just embarrass him. Oh yeah, it'll it'll really? be a, it'll yeah. be a beating. Yeah, Lesnar will really? get crushed. It's the worst matchup ever. Yeah. They're gonna fight a wrestler, a better wrestler who can punch you whenever he feels like it's. He's gonna have a hard night. Right? Yeah. Wow. But hey, he, at the end of the day, he'll go to whoever whoever's paying him the most money, right? Mm-hmm. So if they do the John Jones, fight, if John can beat Gustafson because they just booked that fight yeah. for some time, I can't, oh, really? I can't remember when they're doing that. But they're going to do that and get the interim light heavyweight fight belt. If 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 he comes up for heavyweight and fights DC, that'll be like I thought the DC was fight. saying like for John Jones, he'd go down again too. I think he wants to because he because I think that's he wants more to get of over his the weight hump anyways, right? Is to, to finally beat John Jones at light heavyweight uh, as well. I don't know. That's redeem the happen. loss. You know what I mean? John's a, John's a piece of shit human being, but fuck. He's a monster. He's an yeah. animal. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want to see DC stay heavy and fight him at heavyweight. He yeah. has more of a shot. Even up there. better, like, but still, like, John John's a fucking massive light heavyweight too, right? So yeah. who knows? I just I just want to see John Jones get his face broken. Just <laughs> just because, like, and just because I want that. I don't know, man. Like, you shouldn't get Karma. to act like that. You shouldn't get to act like that. And be rewarded. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, fucking drives me nuts, man. Don't you hate like I don't know, like guys like Alistair that get caught, they get nabbed for the juice, and then like. Okay, you just made two million. You got nabbed. You got to pay like a little percentage. Twenty five hundred dollars. And then next year, and then next year, you're banned for a year. And then next year, you get to fight for three mil. Like, okay, no problem. Yeah, that's the way the UFC works. Uh, someone told me this. I don't know if it's right. I, I brought this up before. Is it uh, the like the NSA? ac or whatever it's like they'll sit well they'll, they'll do all the testing but they've released the results to the promotion they don't read oh. they don't release them to the public wow so they could sh- if they're mad at you they'll just say oh frankie's on gear yeah right but if they like you and you're making the they'll money like, oh, Fra- they're like oh frankie's got knee injuries out for yeah. six months yeah right but i don't wow. know if that's true or not but yeah. it doesn't sound that far-fetched does it well look huh. at josh barnett he got he false flagged and they suspended him for like four years he lost four years of his career in his late yeah. 30s yeah, or like, like a Nick for the weed Diaz, right? Yeah, same As thing. If you're outspoken and they're going to punish you for it, that's but that's crazy through. about weed, man. Like it's not a performance enhancer, you know. I don't know. It helps me fucking ch- like it helps me chill. Laws like, are laws, I guess. I don't know. It's yeah, fucking stupid. Yeah. We got a weed guest on next week. Yeah, so he'll break it down. He'll, he'll have a know. lot to talk about there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Not not me, man. I, I'll say it again next week. I am too lazy to smoke weed. <laughs> like I'm so lazy. I'm like I'm not going outside, man. It's cold and shitty. I will stay inside and just fucking chill. I just can't be bothered i got nothing against it i'm just actually that lazy yeah. so i don't know Whatever. that's funny never heard somebody say they're too lazy to smoke weed it's yeah. usually they smoke weed and then they're lazy <laughs> no, right no well that i'll just i'll like i'll just stand in front of my fridge all night <laughs> like, i can eat all oh, like yeah. i'm i can eat without smoking you know some people they're like oh i have to smoke so i can eat like i'm not i can eat whatever no i i sat yeah. at home by myself last night and i must ate because i ate sammy's halloween candy <laughs> and i must ate like you know the little sample size bags of chips yeah. and, you, and you only get fucking regular because it's yeah. halloween but i probably ate fucking 15 of those things by myself like my i'm covered in shit and halloween's the worst for that man you go and buy like a, a box of candy it's like 90 little chocolate bars and then you yeah. realize you're like damn i ate that whole box yeah like, well let's say my house i'll have buy shit before halloween i'm like no 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 no. It, it'll you can still buy candy on halloween don't get it a week before you'll just, you're just gonna up. sit around yeah, and, like, yeah, and you lie to yourself I'm like oh just one just one kit kat yeah. and then i'm like fucking 20 Kit Kats in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like, that I would was never, good. I'm going to get another yeah, one. Yeah, I, yeah. I would never just go to the store and buy candy, but if it's sitting yeah. in front of me, man, I have zero self control. I'm a fucking yeah. shitty person. Yeah. Um, shitty person. <laughs> I'm a shitty you can't person. Can't say no to chocolate yeah. bars. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead inside. So, uh, yeah. I, honestly, I got uh, I don't got a lot today. I got to take a real wicked piss. So, yeah. uh, let's get it moving. Wrap it, it up. Yeah. We're almost at an hour, anyways. The only other thing I was going to bring up do you know who Stylebender is? Have you heard of the yes. last Stylebender? Yes. He finally got like his, his first big test in the UFC fighting Derek Brunson and he lit him up. Oh, yeah. It was I, great. Yeah. I saw, yeah. I did see Brunson 
lost a he that guy's scary as shit oh, man. i can't wait really? to see what yeah. he does man yeah great kickboxer and like just yeah all around talented there's a guy that's going to get better and better all the time yeah brunson's scary as hell man like yeah. that's a big test so good and he shut him down right he yeah he, yeah said it was like light work it was it was it, he stuffed all the takedowns to the point where brunson was like i said he almost ripped his shorts off trying to trying to yeah. take him down and they it was the first one of the first times i've seen in the ufc where the, where the ref like took position away like yeah. took them off the fence and he's like you're pulling the shorts too much that's two warnings like you're losing position because of it wow. and they put him back in the middle and stopped him with a knee put him down and there is there's nothing scary scarier than going out and fighting a guy like who continuously stops your takedowns because you're like fuck me you know what's coming mm-hmm. and you, the, every time you get more desperate and more desperate and next thing you know you're just yeah getting your ass wiped at the hospital but yeah. <laughs> yeah. i literally <laughs> thought you were gonna say there's nothing more terrifying that when you're in the ufc and some guy's trying to take your shorts off <laughs> oh no, 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 no i'm cool with that i'm getting paid it'll be fine so, no like get like guys uh because guys who come out with that game plan yeah i gotta get this takedown gotta get this takedown and then they don't get it they, they walk into a knee probably yeah they, they right? panic and then it gets worse and when you panic you get slower and then yeah. eventually you're gonna eat it and then mm-hmm. yeah big knee or something like that and like, uh. you see it all the time so but yeah, that's the thing. If you go into anything, boxing is the same, man. You can't go in with one fucking plan. No, you have to have right? different game yeah. plans, yeah. Because if it never goes the way it's supposed to, it's like Tyson said. Like you always have a plan until you get punched in the face, yeah. and then you got to mm-hmm. figure sure. it all out, right? Like, mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we're back at it again here. Greatest, greatest heavyweight of all time, you think? Uh, I, to me, it's Muhammad Ali okay, still, man. Like, I, he's I, my I, guy. I, I 100% agree. I with respect you. Mike Tyson. I respect like everybody. Muhammad Ali is for me the best yeah man. and human being as just, well I, like everything just be all that on everything. top of it right? the one thing that was amazing about Ali and uh, every other every every heavyweight in Tyson will tell you the same thing is like you couldn't even train the stuff that he no. did he was so fast and so it was mean. amazing man yeah and he was before his time like yeah like it, the stuff he did like guys used to like Sonny Liston was like a scary motherfucker his hands were huge yeah. he was a killer man and fucking Mama Ali played with him. Like yeah. It was and he wasn't even a big heavyweight either. Right. Like, he was like a 220. Yeah. But yeah, the, the stuff he could do to you was like, like you couldn't, you couldn't practice. That. And how he quick just, he was. I seen like yeah. him fight in the Olympics against Italy and against a Polish guy in Italy. Yeah. And it was like, he was so fast, man. Like, yeah. It's weird. It's yeah. Crazy. I, the, yeah. The, Muhammad Ali's my fucking For me, girl, he's man. like, for always like, I watched, I used to love, I watched that movie, We Were Kings or something yeah. like that. It was Amazing. called. I couldn't. Yeah, I loved yeah. it, man. It was... When he died, I drove down to Louisville to his wow. funeral. Yeah. That's awesome. Couldn't help me. So I woke up in the morning. Tar's like, go. And I was like, all right. So I went that's for it. That's fucking yeah, sick, it was man. Cool. It was really yeah. cool. A good experience. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. I think that's all I got that's for it. for today. Yeah, sweet little, man. Bit of a bladder thing happening. No, here, uh, so. no homework assignment, real quick. Oh, Frankie, what's your homework assignment for today? Frankie? Wait a minute, I didn't know. I <laughs> oh, there's homework every show. I always give yeah. homework, and usually it's usually it's to be kind to people, but you're oh, okay. pretty kind all the time. Like, Canadian man, it's normal for every us. Every time yeah. I see you, you're always smiling and happy. Almost my looks start frowning. Yes. Um, I'll. You know what? It's cold out today. Just be kind when you're on the way home. You and you're always <laughs> listen. Uh, anytime you go on and off the 401 in this area, you always see the guy standing there. Give him a dollar. Fuck, give him some change, man. Give him some change. Give him some change or go buy those fuckers a coffee because if you give him change, they might be buying meth. Go buy him a coffee. All right. All right. We're in Austria. <laughs> <Oscar point. Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Frank, you're real. Thanks, man. You stepped in Thanks, last man. second, too. Yeah, like, man. I was man. at the gym today. It. We had a little bit of a miscommunication with our, our guest today who we would get in very soon. Yep. And uh, it's like shit. I need a guest, and Frankie just have to be standing in front of me at the same time. Smiling, I was, I was on the treadmill. <laughs> he say, "Hey, look at me. I'm fucking kind." I was like, "Perfect, <laughs> Frankie. What are you doing at two thirty? He's yeah. like, "Nothing." Like, you got a job to do, boy. Thanks, <laughs> Frankie. No good, problem. Good man. time. Thanks man. for having me, man. Thank you, clap, boy. Time. Awesome.